Kirk trying to win it to Thielen, caught at the five! I got three words for you. You like that? That one hurt. I'm not gonna lie, that one hurt quite a bit. I feel like that hurt more than getting blown out the last couple of weeks. I don't know about you, but I guess we still have to talk about it. What's up guys, this is Nick, back with Skull Network, and the Vikings just lost 31 to 30 to the Tennessee Titans in what I believe is easily the best game that we played this year. It was the most well fought, and everyone looked the best. I mean, even the defense, even with all that was going on. So let's just hop right into it. So we'll start off with the defense uh, against Tennessee's offense, and for a while it was more of a it was a bend and don't break sort of situation. I mean, Steven Gostowski had you know six field goals this game, and that was what they were getting most of their points off of for most of the first you say two and a half quarters, and that's because we were able to contain Derrick Henry, and while the young secondary continued to get burned every so often. Uh, like I said, it was one of those things where they bent, but they didn't quite break until the end of the game. And that's where things really kind of hurt us. The Titans went and scored uh, two times in two and a half minutes through Derrick Henry towards the very end of the third quarter, and that's what really got them back into the game. And that's where things kind of started looking a little bleak. Jeff Gladney got the chance to start this game with all of the injuries happening with Mike Hughes and Cam Dantzler being out, and he played reasonably well. Uh, I think it was more of uh, Holden Hill that we needed to watch for. And as per usual, Holden didn't play incredibly well. There was a couple times where he got burnt pretty badly, uh, especially over uh, in the first quarter. But as a whole, the secondary played much better in this game. Overall as well, we got a lot more pressure uh, on Ryan Tannehill this, this week compared to last week's uh, and the week before that. So as a whole, the defense played very well. Obviously giving up 31 points is still not ideal, but it somehow gave them a chance to win. And that's because the offense played re really well. And we will talk about them. Newly acquired linebacker Todd Davis didn't make a whole lot of uh, noise. Uh, I saw him on one tackle, not sure how much of the game he was really in. Uh, I mean, he was signed two days ago from the day I was recording this, but it did seem like things went reasonably okay for the linebacking core too. Eric Kendricks had sort of a half and half game for me. He overran some balls, he didn't play coverage as well as he usually did on some plays, and there was just some mixed tackles, uh, but overall, uh, our top player on defense, or one of our top players on defense, still played reasonably well like we expect him to. That's kind of really all I have to say on the defense. It was just an overall much better game, even though the outcome wasn't exactly what we wanted, and things kind of fell apart towards the end of the third quarter and kind of just continued to fall apart for the most part for the rest of the game. But again, I'm, I'm liking a little bit more what I'm seeing, but I need to see a lot more. Moving over to offense is where we saw a lot of great things today. Once again, the offensive line still showing issues, uh, and we will touch on that when we talk about that last drive here in just a minute. But if we want to look at it, there was a lot of big players today. Kirk Cousins, he played much better than in the last couple weeks. Only 250 yards, but he did throw for three touchdowns and two interceptions. You could really call it one. Obviously, that one was on that Hail Mary at the very end of the game, but he was given a little bit better time and we'll get to the play calling as well. It's much more balanced and allowed for better play action passing and be better protection for the most part overall for Kirk. And just like the defense, I liked a lot more of what I saw. Moving over to Dalvin Cook, he had a career high in rushing yards. He ran 22 times for 181 yards. And I talked about this in the Colts recap video. And if you're gonna pay a guy this much, as much as we pay Dalvin Cook, you gotta give him the ball. And Gary Kubiak, I think he listened. I think he watched last week's video. And that's exactly what he did. 22 carries, he had a few catches in there too. Uh, nothing super significant, but Dalvin also did have a touchdown in there, and like like I said, you get this guy the ball, he will make plays, and it really helped balance out the offense quite a bit. Now, we need to talk about the real star of today, and that is Stefan Diggs' newest replacement. Justin Jefferson went off for 7 catches, 175 yards, and his first career NFL touchdown, and it looks like the chemistry is really starting to bubble there between Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson. I don't know if this was just one of those games where Adam Thielen wasn't targeted as much on purpose, by design, or what it was, or maybe they're just trying to give JJ a better chance, but obviously this things look really good coming from him. I mean, he was a standout at LSU, and it's just really promising to see the, uh, he, I mean, he's the trade pick that we got from Buffalo in the Stefan Diggs trade. So it's essentially a straight swap, you know, Stefan Diggs for Justin Jefferson. And of course, he's nothing close to what Diggs is right now. But if he keeps playing like this, th things will end up being very good for our end of the trade. And I kind of saw this coming. He had, you know, three catches in each of the first two games. 
in the first two weeks of the season. So I, I knew that they were trying to utilize him somewhat and I'm really glad that he got put in the game and used a lot more, especially on that 71 yard bomb. That was a beautiful throw by Kirk and an even better play making both defenders miss by Justin Jefferson. And real quick, I wanna to touch on that touchdown uh, catch by Kyle Rudolph. It feels like he does this every year. I'm pretty sure he did this against Detroit it was last year. It was almost the exact same spot in the end zone where he essentially had it tipped up to himself and then had to go up with the one hand and almost essentially go out of bounds, but ended up making the play. If I find the footage from last year, I'll show you what I'm talking about, but just wanted to touch on that real quick. That was an amazing catch by Kyle Rudolph, and he has the second most touchdowns by tight end since 2015, only second to Travis Kelsey. So, I mean, he's been a great play, uh, great piece on this offense for quite a while, and you know, today I guess really showed. Now we're gonna quick end things off with this recap, uh, talking about that last drive. And as immediately after that game happened and after that drive happened, I went on Facebook and it was just completely flooded with people from all the Vikings Facebook groups that I'm on. Once again, bashing Kirk. And I don't know how in this situation you're able to like logically do that. It just didn't add up to me. Either they weren't watching the same game or they are just in denial. I don't know. And these guys are clearly Kirk Cousins haters that didn't like what they saw, you know, the first two weeks of the season. Oh my God. Did anyone watch Drew Sumia on any of those plays? It happened the entire game. I understand that he has to be in there because of the injuries, but Drew Sumia, at least right now, does not look like an NFL caliber talent or someone that should be here to stay on this offensive line when his real time to step up comes. But yes, there were some bad plays uh, throughout the game by Kirk, and you could argue that at least maybe one of those on that last drive was on Kirk, but my God, the Titans really bumped up the pressure and things just clearly didn't pan out. I mean, it was 4th and 26 or whatever that was. It's a heartbreaker, and Steven Kostowski now has three game-winning field goals to start off the season. I don't understand that. And Ryan Tannehill now has three game-winning drives to start off the season. Don't get that either, but when you have Derrick Henry, uh, he's bound to go off most games, whether it's at the beginning of the game or if it's in the second half. It was definitely a tale of two halves in this case. And I mean, the interception thrown by Kirk at the very start of the second half didn't help things out very much. Granted, it didn't materialize into points, but it just felt like things shifted a little bit after that. Uh, the connection to Justin Jefferson wasn't really there. Dalvin continued to play well. Of course, he left with the injury. Haven't heard anything on that yet, as the game literally just ended like 20 minutes ago from the time I'm recording this. As a whole, I'm pretty okay with what I saw. It was a heartbreaker. I'd rather lose like this than getting smacked down by the Colts of all teams. And you know, it is what it is. Team's 0-3. I'm not saying it's time to tank for Trevor Lawrence, because it's not. It's never time to tank, but these next couple of games coming up against Houston and Seattle, they look like they could be a little more interesting now, but man, it's gonna be tough to take on Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson and teams like that. I'm glad that we're showing some promise because those first two weeks, they were not going very well, I'll tell you what. And that's about all I gotta say about the Vikings and the Titans game. Like I said, a little promising, pretty upsetting, but overall, I'm pretty happy with what I saw. Some guys are progressing and the young guys in the secondary are coming along a little better because they have to step up now. So that's all I got to say on that. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit the button down below to subscribe, hit the like button. If you want to, go ahead and share. Crack Dealer on the street, that's always what I'm going to tell you. He's your best option. Give it to him. He will make sure everybody else sees it. But aside from that, this is Nick with Skull Network and I'll see you guys in week four picks coming out on Thursday. Adios.